Why? Make a lie. But There's what? a difference between a lie and avoiding the truth, and but they've manufactured a whole story. I don't like being called a liar when I'm not a liar. And some people should realise that, oh, well, you're doing things for their own good and not bad. But that don't come into it, does it? It's just that we're doing bad, but we're not doing any good. It's always the bad, isn't it? George, bear that in mind, will you? Next time. Yeah, I told you, once you saw it, I accepted it. Well, you didn't, because you carried on about we'll vote after when we get in the house and everything. Yeah, you said we'll discuss it. We'll discuss yeah. it when the time I'm trying to shut out. them up, for God's sake. Yeah, well, please do. I'm trying to. I can't believe you've taken it so fucking badly. Well, no, nah, we'll let them do what I got to do. What a wanker. Sorry. Pete has come to the diary room. The game's getting more ferocious now, and it is only a game, and it's not that I'm judging them for a real life thing but they don't seem to know a difference between a lie and avoidance of the truth they're manufacturing a whole story and situation and it just seems really desperate they could have achieved the same result by saying were well, the directors not allowed to discuss anything pete do you think you're behaving like a real banker <laughs> Well, I'm certainly not dressed like a real banker, but I think you're reducing us to behaving like real wankers. In fact, that was the best question you've asked in the whole time I've been in here. Honestly, it's boring. Yeah, I, I know it's boring, Preston, but I'm not going to be called a liar. I don't well, know if who quite, cares? Yeah, but if you're quite happy to be called a liar... Then call me, oh, yeah, call me a liar. I'm not, well, I don't I like being called a liar. <laughs> Ten twenty-two p.m. Tracy, Michael, and Dennis are in the kitchen. Okay. Preston and Chantel are in the private members' club. Oh, I just can't deal with it. Under pressure, I can deal with pressure, but I'm not dealing with that. I refuse. Do my head in. <laughs> George, Pete and Maggot are in the spa. How can they not remember that things are thrown on the screen? They must have the memory of fucking goldfish. Thank you. I ain't saying anything about anything. It's like fucking murder she rose, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. It's Angela Lansbury. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I've dealt with enough barefaced liars in my life, and you know what? I'll hang them. I'll hang them and ask enough questions. And the, the amusement I get is, I know they're lying, but I'll make them tell more and more and more and more lies. Yeah, but just bear this in mind, that there could come a point at which they say, look, I'd rather live on a pound a day than go and keep this up. <clears throat> you ever do any acting? Have I? Yeah. No. Nah. Never, ever. Ever, ever? Only maybe in my play school, and that was just like bloody Josie Philly's amazing Technicolor Jane coat. <laughs> that was about as far as I got. Tracy, why are you looking at me like that? I'm not. I'm just, we were just discussing how it was just, you know, how everyone started, it just was getting out of hand, and it's just. Well, what is your feeling on it? Because obviously, you know, everyone's got one. Well,. She's not nominated, at least she got that out the way. No, so. you can say whatever you want, Dennis, but What's it's your just... What's your really say? No, it's just, you know, it's kind of hard to, who do you believe? Who do you trust? Who do you hold on to? Who do you, you know, do you say anything? Do you say, what, where do you fit in? How, you know what I'm well, saying? You say what you feel and then you find out after who right. you could trust and who you couldn't. Because right. you're not going to find that out in this house. You might. <laughs> you might do, yeah, yeah, you might. that's true. You might you do. You could. You might know, but you nine could. times out of ten... You're probably going to find oh, out until then. It's boring. Then. Can we talk about something else? Honestly, it's boring. Yeah, I know, it's go I know it's boring, Preston, but I'm not going to be called a liar. I don't well, if who cares? Yeah, but if you're quite happy to be called a liar... Then call me, oh, yeah, call me a liar. I'm not, well, I, I don't like being called a liar. Ten thirty-one pm
So you've got two more tasks tomorrow? Yeah. Of which you're directors? Huh? Of which you're the directors? Of which we're the directors? I'd strongly advise you if any of the equipment or any of the things that we need to use to complete the task is malfunctioning and the task seems impossible in the interest of you getting the yeah, six... before we do it... But you could have suggested we're... that to us at the time. No, you're the directors. The director, if I was working with a director who didn't <coughs> cover those grounds, I'd fire him right away. Well, I probably ain't fit to be a director. I didn't, we didn't put ourselves forward. We was... We just don't no, but if you take on the task, you work out exactly but I don't, what If I take on the task, I don't, I don't say I'm a professional director. Let's not start at all. No. Right, tomorrow, when the next task comes up, we'll all agree that we're happy with the equipment and everything that we're doing, yeah? Well, I don't think me or all Chateau have got a future in my bank directing, Pete. I'm not trying to suggest that for a second. With the industry you're in, you should learn to be thorough about things like that. You'll end up well, I've got an accountant all. for that. Yeah, but this ain't real life. What are you rolling your eyes at? There's no way they could have told anyway whether the equipment was malfunctioning. How could they? All I did was put the bags on the scale, said what it said. If, as I suspect, it was randomly programmed to be right and wrong and right and wrong. Which it seemed to be. That seemed yeah, to be the pattern. Yeah, but they tell that? Because and if you went in and said to Big hey, Brother, is this malfunctioning? I swear, I put a bag on, I read the number, and then that I said it out loud. That's all I was doing. Yeah, but surely, right, Big Brother, between six pound a head and one pound a head, they'd want us to have one pound a head, because that obviously... Well, I don't know. Like, stressful shopping, you know, yeah. everyone's not going to want to get what they want. We're all going to be hungry, we're all going to be stressed out, we're all going to be arguing. That's you should look to the wording So they give us a task that like is that. impossible to get 70% of that. When the scales are loading up, we're giving probably more or less every bag back to people. It's taking more time, so you're not going to get 70% done, are you? So even if the scales were right, Oh, so we put a no, no. You could possibly have counted 70% of No, I don't either. No. But then, even if the scales were right, the fact there was a discrepancy in the currency. So, obviously, they're not playing by the rules, the fact they put in other. I think that's right, yeah. No, that there. isn't. That, that's and it. they want to create division amongst us. And it worked, Pete. Yes. It worked. That's what they've been doing for three weeks. Oh, Pete, can't we all just get along, eh? Stop oh, hugging me like that, your girlfriend will get jealous. Can't we just get along, Pete? No, because I thought, give me a cigarette then. I ain't got any. You bastard. I've got nicotine withdrawal, so I'm psychotic. Eleven or five p.m. Maggot is in the sauna. George is in the spa. Michael and Chantel are in the bedroom. Dennis, Tracy and Pete are at the seating area. Well, I'm willing to drop it because Chantel's digging herself deeper and deeper into a hole. I might as well give it a spade and at this rate she'll be ordering chop suey in China tomorrow. Their hands are shaking like leaves. <clears throat> and he keeps coming up and physically hugging me and putting his arms around me and getting smoochy, which makes me want to hail chunks. <laughs> Because he thinks if I think he's, he's like flirty with me that I'll lay off. Mm. I'd use him as dental floss. He's a little whore. Preston is in the diary room. God, it must be fucking annoying being Pete Burns. Do you know what I mean? Like, everything is a conspiracy. Everyone's out to get him. No one is just fucking, is, can be his friend because there's always something extra going on and like... I think because I'd never been on the, the end of it, uh, I always sort of, I didn't find it funny, I found it uncomfortable, but I could always escape. But now he's just like, fucking being a total wanker. You mentioned that Pete was being an idiot. Why do you think he was being an idiot? He's just been so annoying. Like, fair enough, you've got a point, raise it, it's done. But he's just kind of, it's like, he's not even being, like normally he's, he's got, He's being ridiculous, but he's witty with it, and it's kind of quite funny. But he, now he's just being like an annoying little child, like carrying on with the same fucking thing. Oh, it's doing my head in. Pete is, is kind of so relentlessly, uh, sort of, so relentlessly truculent and so, so relentlessly aggressive. You know, I've said the honeymoon is over before, but I think now it's, it's just kind of, uh, everyone feels like the good times have gone, and now it's, it's, uh, the last stretch and I think a lot of people think that it's it's just going to have to be a sprint and sort of uh, pushing everyone else out of the way which is sad but 
um, at least me and Chantel got that room so we can have a laugh still.